Welcome to Crimson Guitars, welcome to my home studio and welcome to Luthier's Question Time 64. This is a, a live stream, a podcast, uh, where you ask me questions about predominantly guitar building, but pretty much anything to do with making life in business as a craftsperson or, well, you know, anything goes. So ask away and uh, we will uh, endeavour to endeavor to answer in an intelligent way, if at all humanly possible. Now, uh, this is the, I missed last week's live stream. In fact, both of them, I missed the live stream on this, the Crimson Guitars Extras channel, and the main Monday live stream build on the main Crimson Guitars channel. I was, uh, I was very, very not well. Uh, not COVID, thankfully, but uh, yeah, I was incapable of, of anything uh, remotely remotely intelligent so uh, but we're back I'm feeling a lot better now and uh, it's all good we've got a bunch of you are in in the building Divergent Guitars Tom Woods Dave Nyberg Borgonian Evolution Wolford Guitars Creveri and SC Guitars and Bill Tutum Carmen says Ben Boba Fett has already Boba Fret has already been used by Donny Guitars there's more than a few people who've built a Boba Fret uh, guitar but uh, I don't care um yeah, they're uh, mine's better, so 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 there, in potentia. Um, Frugal fixer Spike Robert R says also sorry Ben for busting your chops for no streams last week. I hope you're fully recovered now. Not fully. Uh, I I had a I, well, you saw the development over a couple of weeks. I had a cough and my lungs were shot, and uh, they're still not a hundred percent. But we're good. I'm. Uh, I have 100% been missing this and my workshop in particular. So as a quick recap, I haven't actually built anything in my workshop here apart from the Boba Fred guitar, meaning there are two whole other projects that uh, were put on hiatus due to uh, a little bit me being not well, but predominantly due to be me moving the vintage tool shop uh, over. I've essentially closed down the business that was Vintage Toolshop and uh, it's merging with Crimson Guitars Limited out of the Crimson Guitars uh, space. The website is still up and always will be but uh, concurrently all of the Vintage Toolshop stock is also available now on the Crimson Guitars website. I know Creve Ryan particularly was interested in that uh, among other people. So that's there. Uh, now, Super Chats are the best way to guarantee that I see your question, although saying that I do skim through and depending on how many people we have here, I tend to get to the bulk of questions uh, as we go through. So uh, that being said, uh, JS Trucking Guitars has come in with the first Super Chat, uh, $2 just saying, I made it in time today, lol. Uh, JS Trucking and Guitars is... Uh, almost always, well, is often on the road and doesn't always make the entire stream. So, uh, so there we go. Uh, welcome, welcome everybody. Uh, Sweet Tea Guitars is in the house. Uh, uh, hey, Sweet Tea, how you doing? Um, JF Custom Guitars says, I was crying yesterday when I watched the Bubba Fred build when you used it as a rifle. The, <coughs> excuse me, the, so we finally, found a, a second editor who just gels with what I do and his editing style is not too far away from that of Talitha who's my long-term editor and still and always will be and uh, the whole thing just works really well so Bear is the one who's been taking eight nine ten hour streams and editing them down to uh, under an hour in most cases but also keeping it coherent and also turning it into a stream, into a, a, an edited video that feels like it was designed from the beginning as a build, which is mind blowing to me. Uh, so yeah, I, it's, it's incredible. So his editing and his special little touches that he does are hilarious and awesome. There was uh, one bit in that particular episode where I, um, um, I was edited onto a, a Lord of the Rings steed with uh, with all that that entails. It was hilarious. Uh, Steve Tuttle Guitars is coming with $10 and said, Ben, I finished a guitar with Crimson Oils and some wax several years ago. Uh, I would like to freshen up the finish with more oil. Can, should, I clean it and apply more oil? Uh, what to clean it with? Thanks. That's a very, very good point. Uh, 
And yes, a couple of years for for a bit of a, a freshen up, a couple of years is, is is not doing too bad. I had my my twelve hour build that had maybe a couple of coats of oil applied there and then and was just done and it was only four or five years later that I even bothered to to think about freshening it up so uh, uh, yeah it's fairly good stuff um, although I am biased of course now to essentially what you need to do is you need to clean off the wax so I'm assuming you used a renaissance wax or something like that over the top you want to clean that off so that you can then apply more guitar finishing oil underneath and and build it up and just brighten up the finish essentially and uh, I think that the very best way to do that would be to apply uh, gently and don't slosh it on there uh, willy-nilly as it were you need to apply some acetone or uh, white spirit now, for example, if you did use Renaissance wax, which is a microcrystalline wax, it's almost certainly been um, its wax crystals suspended in white spirit or a substance like that. So you need to find out what works for the wax that you've got. But one of those things will essentially melt it and rub it away. It will take a little bit of the guitar finishing oil underneath as well, of course. Uh, and I don't want you to just to go with a very, very wet rag because that would potentially uh, go too far and just remove too much material and maybe make the finish patchy. So run a test at an invisible place if you can uh, and go for it. Now, that being said, after, after having said all of that, you may well find that just applying uh, a high build guitar finishing oil, for example, over as it currently stands, could be fine. Uh, the reason being, you're, you've had this guitar for two years, you've been playing it for two years, and the bulk of that wax is probably not there anymore in any case. Um, yeah, it's an, interesting, it's an interesting thought. Okay, come on then. We have got uh, 93 people watching, only 30 likes. Bring on the likes. You know that it... Uh, makes me feel better about myself so uh, so there we go um uh gabor says i took your advice and uh, did not reshape the neck from a d-shape to a c uh five uh it's a now it's now a five string bass so yeah y you would have removed far too much material it would have been too thin uh without adding more on some way but it's a uh, it's a good thing i'm glad that uh, we could help last well, two weeks ago at this point. Now, does bad vodka taste as white, <laughs> count as white spirits? I think it probably would work, yes. Um, I mean, bad vodka will rip the lining off pretty much anything as, yeah. As a sort of probably 12 year old, I managed to, uh, I managed to uh, get some cash and my best friend and I found some poor sap to buy some booze for us. And uh, it was the cheapest tiny little taster bottle of the rawest, nastiest vodka in, it was it just, and I, I think that one experience was uh, and is the reason why I, to this day, am not an inveterate drunk. I have poor self-control. You guys, you guys have seen many of the the, the evidences of that fact, and uh, that experience just I was like, no, no, booze is not for me. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> drop D tuning says, uh, uh, drop D tuning says, you want likes, Ben? You got it. Kind regards. Thank you very much. Uh, Okay, Toot M. Carmen comes in with uh, neck plates. Is there any reason why it should not be recessed to make it flush? Uh, there is no reason why it should not be recessed. The, a guitar that, and I know this is a bit iffy because things have changed, but that design, the design of a bolt-on neck with a neck plate, etc., etc., etc. It is designed to be cheap. In fact, 
arguably most vendors are cheap for the money. Okay, so it is a it is a, a cheap thing and taking the time on a handmade guitar at least, forget that CNCs exist, taking the time to route out the, uh, the, the exact shape of that plate and then recess that down, etc. That is adding valuable time and effort to something that is designed and created to be a cheap process. So no, there's no reason apart from the fact that, uh, well, there, I've said it. I don't need to say it 300 times. Uh, SC Guitars asking who has tried the Crimson Coffee just reminded me that actually we're supposed to have sent some out to him and to Creever. I am not entirely sure if they, uh, uh, if that happened, uh, but we'll go. Robert R says, wow, I had to reload my stream and found out it had started. Uh, we are live. There's people watching. There's chats. Okay, fine. This always, always makes me paranoid. So the new Crimson Coffee is great fun. It is, it has got a kick. It has got a kick ick to it. Um, but uh, there we go. Well then, Anthony Cuncliffe says, uh, after misplacing my string cutters, I needed to buy some new ones. Uh, so I went to Crimson first, but found you don't sell them. Uh, is it because you'd use fret cutters instead? Would you ever make them? Okay, so a string cutter is basically just a good quality uh, strong end cutter and no it's not something that we've ever really gone into because most people have something that will do already in-house now personally personally my absolute favorite are these Morn Industries cutters they are incredibly strong you find them secondhand all over the place. I think there's a single pair of them available uh, at Vintage Tool Shop. Uh, but the nice thing is they've got a, the bevel here is actually undercut. So while it's very strong internally, it's, it's, it's also got a very sharp edge. It's just an amazing design. They also made by various other, this shape has been made by various other companies as well. Uh, Bernard. Bernard, I think. But uh, anyway, so that being said, I tend not to... I don't want to be the company that buys a standard off-the-shelf side cutter like this and then bumps the price by 50% to say this is specially designed for cutting strings because that's morally wrong. Uh, that being said, we are now that the Vintage Tool Shop is available is a part of Crimson Guitars, we are also going to start expanding into uh, buying and selling new, more traditional tools. So yes, there will be tools like this uh, available at Crimson uh, moving forward. So we're going to start with sets of new chisels and carving gouges and, and cutters and things. And in fact, I need to put that in my notebook. My pencil's already in the notebook, how's that? Um, so there we go. Now every week I uh, I write things down on a random piece of paper and then lose the paper. I've now got it in a, in a, a yearly diary, so woohoo! <coughs> and I would not use fret cutters to cut strings. Uh, not that they are not strong enough, but uh, a fret cutter, sort of that they're not strong enough. Fret cutter has been ground down so that it cuts flush to the side of the fretboard. And even with frets, if you cut and twist at the same time, you can chip the, the, the blade of your fret end cutter because it's been ground down. It doesn't have a huge bevel. It's got a much finer bevel, which is how you are allowed to have a flush cut, but it comes with a compromise of strength. So, Frets are nickel silver or sometimes stainless steel, etc. The steel in the center of most strings is actually harder than frets. Uh, not the nickel or bronze that's wound around it necessarily, but the this inner core, and that can cause trouble with fret end cutters. So I would not suggest you that you use those. Alrighty. 
Um, ER Webster's coming with a super chat. Thank you very much, ER Webster, and says, I prefer building a template first and guitar from that, even from custom work. Has it always been your style to build first and template afterwards, or is that something that you changed or evolved into? Um, so it's a very good point. I I am engaging in some self-reflection right now. I think that I think that the fact is I do not. Okay. I, I, I trust myself to get the shape that I want, and I often actually at the moment I don't have a particular thing in mind before I start. If I'm building a Tele or an SG or something like that, fine, I'll start with a standard template. We probably sell the template from Grimson. Uh, I seem to be mentioning a lot of things that we sell, and I, I don't want to be that guy either. But uh, yeah, we, I, we've probably got the template, the laser cutter will pull one off, and I'm, I'm fine. So I've got a P-Base over there, I've got a, 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 a PRS style set of templates in here for some future projects and things. But if I'm doing a custom instrument, most of the time, first of all, I find it easier just to bandsaw out and then use the spindle sander or oscillating spindle belt sander uh, to, to finesse the shape. And that's not necessarily because I don't like routers. I don't particularly like, like using router tables, but uh, because I really don't like making templates. Like, really don't like making templates. Uh, plywood is one thing, but uh, most of my templates would be made out of um, <sighs> MDF. And it's, it's just not, it's not fun to work with. It's just not nice. I would rather one and done go for it. And then if I am, if, I am ever going to reproduce the guitar, then we will take photographs of it, take the guitar to Crimson, and we we'll digitize it, and on the laser cutter make a template. Now, if I need to, yeah, I'll make a template, but generally I don't. The, and it comes down to the fact that uh, when I was working on my own, when I was, when I had, when I was Crimson Guitars, and I, there was a distinct possibility of somebody ordering another version of the same guitar uh, from me, then yeah, I, I would, and I didn't have laser cutters or CNC machines or, or any of these beautiful toys that we have now. Yeah, I would make a template first. I would finesse the template. I would be absolutely sure that that was the shape I wanted. And it would take two or three days longer to get to the final guitar before even building the guitar. Probably safer, probably wiser. Uh, just as a final point, I, as a final point, the guitar is only one of the products that I'm making. My, the, the real thing I'm making here is actually the video. <clears throat> and uh, making a template is not only boring for me, it's boring to watch to a certain extent, I think, I would say. And, uh, People get a kick out of wondering if I'm going to mess it up by just, oh, that's the shape, cut on the bandsaw. Oh my god, I cut off my upper horn or whatever. So I think it's more entertaining the way I do it. But uh, yeah, there we go. Whew. Jay is trucking guitars, asks me if I saw his second re reply to my latest Instagram post. I have not. Uh, I am very, very rarely on on Instagram, like, I, I really do need to spend more time on that. I, I say this all the time, I would love having, and it, it sounds so up my own ass, I would love having somebody, I would both love and hate having somebody following me all day every day with, who, who does that sort of stuff and says, oh, Ben, so and so saying this on an Instagram um, post. What do you want to say? And then I reply and he types on my behalf while I'm building the guitars and they take photographs. We'd have like 400 more uh, posts a month on the various social media channels and it would be beneficial for Crimson, but also I crave my solitude. So, so there we go. Uh, okay, JS Trucking and Guitars has come with another one. Says, why not make templates out of acrylic instead of MDF? They last longer. They do last longer. They're also much more expensive. Uh, it, it is much more expensive. 
and if you are going to be using it in a production facility and you want to make 20, 30, 40, 50 guitars out of one template set, yeah. I would buy uh, I would buy a Crimson MDF kit or phone us and say, hey, will you make this for me out of acrylic? We may, it's, we'll probably even offer that as, as an option uh, on the website. How's that? Um, but the vast majority of people who are buying from us are not doing that. And if they were, they would probably be making their own templates. They wouldn't be making another Tele or another Strat or uh, Iceman or whatever it happens to be. They want to make this one guitar and they want to make it very, very well with the best possible start, uh, i.e. a top-notch template. But then they're probably never going to use that template again. And I think that it's just, uh, uh, it's a waste to use acrylic for that sort of thing. Uh, the other... I, I, and I just don't like using plastics in general. I don't like, I don't like it. MDF is not much better, but yeah, it's one of those things. <sighs> Ivan Wizard, <coughs> Ivan Wizard says, free guitar with every bag of coffee? Seems like a great deal. Uh, if not a poor business choice. Kitchen building college placement is no fun. Save me, Ben. Um, yes, uh, I have, We've got emails from you. We've been speaking to you, as far as I know. Um, but uh, where does this free guitar with every uh, bag of coffee come from? Because that does not sound like me. <laughs> I mean, I give guitars away on a regular basis, but not that. Paul Needs, how are you? Um, coming with another super chat. Said cheap, cheap bandsaw versus router plus template for body, neck, rough shaping, uh, like the outline plus sanding allowance, especially for a no novice. Uh, Honestly, I think you need both. Uh, now, uh, a router and template is not... <coughs> you, it's not rough. It is. It will take you to within a quarter of a millimeter or so of where you want it to be. And, uh, and that is what the template is for. The bandsaw, you use a bandsaw, whether it's a cheap bandsaw or a very expensive bandsaw, makes no difference as long as it is well set up. You've just reminded me of something I need to sort out. The veneering bands or a crimson is not set up well. And uh, I noticed it while somebody else was using it and I didn't want to stop them because it, uh, yeah. Uh, but anyway, so a cheap bandsaw can be set up very, very well. Uh, it just takes time and sometimes doesn't want to stay set up. But uh, even a cheap bandsaw will cut to within a millimeter or so of the line, which is where you want to be to then using the router and template uh, to take it the final step. Unless you are not going to use the router and template at all, and you will sand down to the line with an oscillating spindle or belt sander. Now these Triton oscillating spindle belt sander machines are incredibly inexpensive uh, for what they are. When I started, I spent the best part of a month's salary on a, a very heavy duty, I mean it lasted us probably 10 or 15 years, um, jet spindle sander as the first major purchase that I ever did. And uh, it's an incredible thing. Uh, we get the same work out of these uh, for around about 100 pounds. So, uh, uh, which is coincidentally much cheaper than you would um, have it, it's much cheaper than buying a router and uh, and, and everything. Uh, in the end, I think that you need all of the tools, but does that surprise you? <sighs> Dusty Dark Horse has come in with a super chat and says, what is that tool that always gets lost? For me, it's 9 16 inch sockets and putty knives. I've st my putty knives are... Okay, so always gets lost for me seems to be my uh, scalpel blade, which uh, uh, there's one there. So it's uh, just a standard Swan Morton with a, a 10A blade on it. There are two of them 
in my immediate vicinity right now and I have not seen the second for about three weeks and I constantly lose this because that's a tool that you use, you, you put it down and it goes underneath a bit of tissue or, or whatever. Um, the tool that I misplaced and absolutely regret the most though was the tiny little uh, are planes girls or boys? I don't know. It's one of these that was about two thirds the size and that got uh, swept up in some, in some shavings uh, a long time ago and uh, that one that still hurts. Okay. <coughs> I have heard the 10 mil, 10 millimeter sockets are the ones that always go missing. Is that the same as 9 sixteenths? Probably. All right. There isn't whiskey in there. I've just uh, changed the, uh, changed the washer on that tap and it does not taste nice. JS Trucking has come back in with a $10 super chat this time. Thank you very much, Dave. And says, since you didn't see the reply, I just said that I got a second camera for multi-angle footage. Haha. <laughs> I had a Kodak AZ528 and now a Canon T100 Rebel and both are 1080p H HD. Uh, the Canon T100 Rebel is a fantastic uh, camera. It is called something else in the UK. Wow, that water tastes horrible. Um... Yes, it's called something else in the UK, but we used them uh, for a lot of Crimson footage for uh, a number of years, actually. So, yeah, good going there. Uh, we, I am firmly within the Canon ecosystem, and uh, the reason why I stick with one manufacturer across the board is that the colour correction within the cameras tends to be closer to each other. Uh, that being said, yeah, you know, most people wouldn't notice that there's a slight difference in how the camera takes and, and, and what the different things look like. Uh, the, the fact that we have got all of these different, that's another camera, so what there's, there you go. I probably, they're right next to each other. All of these different views makes for a much, much, much better, wrong one, three, for a much, much better video in the end and it also means that uh, you as a uh, as a builder will spend more time building and less time making the videos themselves out of interest out of interest how <sighs> okay so we're obviously on the verge of announcing everything that's going on with uh, ggbo uh, 22 so that's 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 coming along and it's going to be happening uh, fairly soon how how do I say this? A lot of you have had to learn how to edit in order to do GGBO. A lot of you aren't interested in editing in the first place. And it crossed my mind potentially that I could find a group of editors who would be willing to edit uh, videos, builders' videos for GGBO for a fee. Um, now, Would that appeal? Or are all of us here creatives who want to have the whole the whole thing? Uh, anyway, it's it's uh, something uh, something that crossed my mind. We are we're always thinking. It's a problem. It re really is a problem. Okay, Morgonian Evolution says Lucifer is an awesome dude. Funny as all get out and a really good builder. Uh, <laughs> Uh, half of the comments in this are just people talking amongst themselves, and I never really know what's a question and what's not. Uh, okay. Drew Drew Kernan says, Your tools are so perfectly put up behind you, and you seem to put them away well. Is that something you developed? Oh, hell yes. I am the messiest person available. Uh, growing up with ADHD, it's something I have always struggled with. I So... It turns out I have ADHD myself, and uh, if you look at the rest of the of the workshop, uh, it's absolutely it, it it tends to chaos. Uh, these tools here are put away. These are the ones that I use the most. It's part set. There are some tools that I just don't use, 
and they're there because I love them and I love looking at them. And it looks really good behind me for that matter. But it's also, there are few things more frustrating than knowing that you've got a 5 16th um, socket that you need or a scalpel blade and you ponder, wander around for 10 minutes looking for this damn tool that you had. There is nothing guaranteed or more guaranteed to take me out of my flow state than knowing I've got a tool and then, or, or with my daughter's guitar the other day, I was looking for the pickup and I had put it, I had put the pickup in this little closed box and couldn't find it for half an hour and it was so frustrating. So, uh, so I taught myself how to and force myself to put them away. And when it gets to a point that my workbench can't be accessed properly, I have a quick three minute cleanup and I throw it back where it belongs and it, it relaxes me and, and, and we're there. But uh, yeah, I mean, the ADHD thing is a, is a huge issue. Uh, I'm, I'm in the process now of, of proper diagnosis. So I've gone through the first initial bits and pieces and everybody's there is like, yeah, you've got it. We're surprised you didn't know. Um, but now I'm waiting for the, uh, for the next appointment and I'm going to have to wait till October for that, um, which is crazy. Jules has come in with a 50 euro super chat. Dude, you are, thank you, but crikey. Uh, it says, hey Ben, when will Precision Protractor, Fret Slot Cleaning Saws, Iwasaki Fast, Smooth Cut Flat, Half Round, and Starbond Superfast Thin 55 grams be in stock? I haven't got the 10% yet either, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I want to support you. Uh, you really need to check your junk mail because you really, really, really should have been sent a coupon. Uh, I've heard people talking about it. Uh, so, uh, yeah. I will look into that. Uh, and since I have your email address, I'm going to have to get back to you. There are some things I can do about some of those. Other things like, for example, the fret slot cleaning saw, that is out of stock worldwide to the point that I am seriously considering uh, basically making one in-house that will do if at all possible because, I mean, we've done it in the past, it's just time consuming. So um, I'm going to write this down. Pick taken. Okay, so I will uh, I will have a look at that uh, tomorrow. Not tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow I'm live streaming a build. I will have somebody look at that tomorrow, and we will get back to you via email. Uh, but yeah, please check your junk uh, email because you really should have had. Uh, an email. Luther for Bills, I think we were talking about you just now, uh, has come in with a super chat and says, I lost my crimson uh, end dressing file and I bought a new one. Now I have two! Um, yeah, been there, been there, done that uh, on more than one occasion. Uh, I've started using my end file which is a very, 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 very fine file. I've started using that as a final finish on the frets themselves as well as the ends. And that does actually tend to wear that file down because it's so fine. So uh, it's not really designed for that much work. So if you start doing that uh, to save you time on sandpaper, then uh, you'll, you'll eventually get to a point where you only have one again. Uh, that being said, I had my grubby little mitts on the uh, second batch of Velorb prototypes of the new Crimson crowning file. So we're going to have the standard one that we've got now and then there's going to be a premium option that is a, a better quality file but also there'll be various different uh, grades there. So uh, yeah, less sanding and, uh, and Swiss files now. So the fun begun begins. Okay. Okay, come on then, Ben. Uh, uh, Jerome Kremen. Sorry, this screen is much smaller than my other one. Uh, 
says, uh, new here for P-Rail pickups, is it better to set it up as just a humbucker or as a coil tap or split? Uh, a P-Rail's, uh, well, no, set it up as a humbucker standardly, as standard, and then have the switches to split or, or, or do the coil taps, etc. Um, they designed and created to be able to give you everything that you want. So, uh, yeah. That being said, I still haven't actually played with them myself. Which is incredible. They're, they're, mm, yeah. Alexis Guitar says, Hi Ben, I'd like to invest in an oscillating spindle sander, but on a budget. Uh, try to do a portable, cheaper version with a narrow rectangular flat surface. Would that be usable for guitar building? I have one of those. Um, I'm looking at it right now. Yes, it would be usable for guitar building, but in my opinion, it is... You would have to build that into a workbench in order to make it proper, because the, the, the whole point of the spindle sander is that you are holding the guitar and working it around and looking and working around and looking. Having your guitar clamped to the workbench and then using the tool that way is... It's not, as, it's not as good, it isn't as good. And in my opinion, the price difference is not that great. Um, no, tell you what, you guys Google it and you guys let me know how much it costs. Now, I've got a small piece of on here that my sister left. I'm gonna put it in my mouth to get the horrible taste of that water out of my mouth. Please forgive me. Nisuno? I don't know what that means, so no, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> Rob Tootle says, yes, I've got the portable spindle sander. It's good for the smaller stuff like headstocks, but struggles with full body thicknesses. There we go. That's the answer I was uh, expecting. Joe Brown says, Evening Ben, if you were to set up an entire workshop from scratch, what do you think is the lowest end of budget you could expect to spend? <sighs> One million dollars. It really depends on what you're trying to do. If you want to build guitars by hand, from scratch to finish, then there are certain specialist tools that you absolutely have to have. So. Um, the essential fret leveling and dressing tool kit is the barest minimum. Uh, the the crimson protractor that was mentioned earlier is is required. A good protractor is absolutely required. Uh, a, a, a good straight edge is absolutely required. I'm, I'm looking around. Uh, leveling beams for sure. Uh, radius gauges or radius blocks at the very least. Fret rocker, I mean, that's in the essential kit, 100%. I did a video, here you go, I, I, I did a video probably a year ago, now I've got built under my teeth, that was, I think it ended up being 15 essential tools that you need as a luthier. And it goes through 15 specialist tools, 15 hand tools, and 15 machines, or something like that, or 10, 10, and 10. Uh, now, a small bandsaw, a hand router, uh, an oscillating spindle sander, yes, 100% absolutely required. But uh, what you are... And what I'm saying here is quite scary and uh, shouldn't scare you because I would not suggest that any of you go out and buy every single one of these things at once. That's not necessary. Yes, some of the specialist tools for setting up a guitar and you know, crowning files and things like that, you can't do it without those. And uh, budget versions are available, but suck. I mean, truly, uh, like, mm -mm. Uh, and there are ways that you can make them yourself, depending on your level of, of ability. But uh, that being said, uh, buy what you need when you need it. So, for example, a small bandsaw, Okay, that's option number one. A jigsaw will do the same work at, at a budget, and in fact, your granny might have one. Okay, so start with a jigsaw. Use that until you've 
got to the point where you really, really, really need a bandsaw. You want to bookmatch a, a top or something like that. And then when it's not, hey, I'm spending two thousand pounds on kitting a workshop, I'm you know, I'm just buying another tool. I'm spending two hundred pounds a month over a longer period, which could, I hope, be a little bit more achievable. Uh, that being said, in all seriousness, if 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 I was to answer your question properly, well, let's do some math. Including two or three planes, including a set of chisels and sandpaper and clamps. Do not forget clamps. A workbench. I'm going to assume you have access to a workbench. Uh, all of these things, you're probably talking somewhere between £1,500 and £2,000, I would say, uh, at, at a budget. And you could easily spend five if you really wanted to. But, yeah, buy the tool when you need to, not right up at the beginning. Grow into it. Okay, I'm going to change the uh, the camera so I can pick this built on my teeth. How's that? Ha ha! Woohoo! Success! Ha ha! Alrighty. <coughs> uh, JS Trucking and Guitars has come in again and says, if you didn't have a bandsaw, what tool would you use to cut plywood parts? I've tried both a circular saw and a jigsaw, but it ruined the parts I needed for the plate joining jig. Uh, so, uh, it depends on the size of the part. Uh, you can you can put a a very coarse blade in one of these piercing uh, piercing saws, uh, and I have done I have cut templates out using this before when I didn't have access to band saws. I think I did that on the Cyberpunk build, which was in the small workshop there where I didn't have a band saw set up when uh, lockdown first happened. So that's an option. A good jigsaw should be fine. Uh, a good a circular saw also should be fine. So I, I, what I think you're doing is cutting very with a particularly coarse blade. So with a jigsaw, uh, take the wood blade that you're using and exchange it for a hacksaw style blade. And that should give you a much cleaner cut. It won't last as long and it might burn a little bit. But if you cut outside of the line and then go in with the saw rasp, for example, uh, you should be fine. But those are the two tools that um, those are the two, two tools that uh, are there. Uh, Jules, send 10% code. Uh, I will find out what's happening with that. And we will get back to you. Okay. Now, now, now. Joe Brown says, 5K was roughly what I was expected to hear. Interesting. Maybe if I buy a new house or win the lottery, I'll start collecting. But uh, 5K spent over two years or three years is, doesn't feel like 5K. Um, yeah, you can get started for 500. 500K, that is. Um, <coughs> <coughs> Please excuse me. I mustn't make jokes. Okay. Um, <coughs> Tommy Bland asks if there are any specialist jigs worth making for guitar building, and if so, would you do a video on them? Uh, so, yes. I did, there is a video out there, probably on this channel, the Extras channel, where I made a thicknessing jig for my oscillating spindle belt sander. That was to thickness sides down for acoustic building. Uh, there is a, a headstock thicknessing jig I want to do. Um, and that's something that we need to have in our school. Uh, a standard bench hook can be very useful depending on what sort of saws you use. And also, I would suggest a, a definitely a shooting board. Hell, I was actually looking at it while I was trying to figure out what I was what I was trying to think about. Shooting board, which is just a standard thing that uh, you'll be able to find many, many videos of people making those things. 
so yeah. Uh, JS Trucking says the parts were two inches wide by 24 inches long. Woo. Yeah, uh, three quarters of an inch thick. And the jigsaw I used a wood clean cut reverse tooth blade. Um, uh, okay. The other potential issue there was then the quality of the plywood. Uh, but uh, yeah, in reality, in reality for that, I wouldn't use, because it's only two inches wide, I would not use a power tool at all unless I had one that was really, really good. Um, I would just use a standard hard point wood saw. Just cut straight down the line. Shunk, and you'd be sorted. Alrighty, so here are... Uh, uh. Sweet Tea Guitar says, Hi Ben, I sent you a couple of pics of the bridge going on my GGB I built via Instagram. I will check out my Instagram soon. Uh, I think you really dig it. Check it out. Next level stuff. Cool, okay. I will check that out. Uh, I'll write that down on my thing. Um, I do need... If I had... I, I wish I had the, the time to actually do the amount of admin that uh, I really need to do. But, uh, yeah. It is just not happening. Uh, that being said... That being said, Discord, uh, Rocket Punk says, Hi Ben, you said in an earlier stream that bamboo was viable to make guitars out of. I have a similar question. See, in my garden grows a hazelnut that already grew at my grandparents' house, and, I, and an idea came to my mind. Do you think it could be possible to make a top out of that? Uh, yes. Absolutely. Um, I've never knowingly used hazelnut wood myself, but frankly... As long as it is a, a relatively stable hardwood and a tree that old would be, um, there is no reason why not, really. Uh, yeah, no reason. Alan Barnes says, Bun, for your one day build, and since it is your favorite, make a copy of the 12 hour guitar and raffle it off. Uh, the costs of parts go to uh, Crimson or wherever they came from. The rest go towards more funding of GGBO 22. Um, yes, potentially. Uh, I don't like repeating myself quite so much, but uh, I would like to do... Haha, here's the hesitation. I really would like to do a production version of that guitar. Uh, now, the whole raffle system worked very well and is something that I am going to do more. I don't want to overdo it, but... Uh, yeah, you know, if I don't have a customer for a build or if it isn't for myself, but yeah, I'll be raffling them off for sure. Uh, Dusty Dark Horse uh, says he's watching, says they are watching the complication build and are really wondering how often it actually gets played or is it a very expensive wall decoration? It's a pretty expensive wall de decoration, to be honest. Uh, the thing though is that I have kept many of my builds and they're basically mine and you know i only really play two or three of them regularly and those are the ones that i've got on my lounge the 12 hours one my uh the the first scion prototype is up there and i love it and uh, yeah various other bits and pieces so yeah if if i had kept it and was only one of i still wouldn't play it because it's an expensive wall decoration <laughs> Which is a bit embarrassing. I tend not to build guitars in that fashion. Uh, finally, Spike says, thanks for the advice on the tool well. I don't know where it would have fit in my little guitar room. Uh, I need to stain the maple jaws on a vice, drill dog holes, and big decision, drawers? I'm thinking two shallow um, to the left, one deep for bigger stuff on the right, all the way across one wide drawer, squeezes me behind the bench. Uh, that is an absolutely beautiful bench. And uh, yeah, I personally don't use drawers. If you um, and if you do have drawers, have them start lower down. You need to be able to clamp things to your workbench. Uh, so bear that in mind. But no, that is an incredible looking bench. Woohoo. Okay. Uh... <laughs> okay. There we go. Feed me queries, people. Where have we? We've been going for nearly an hour. Haha, uh, <clears throat> <laughs> yes. Bill says, don't forget to add sharpening tools to your budget. These are an absolute must. Yes, so 
even and as a budget you could use the scary sharp system on a bit of float glass it works very very well um, not quite to the level that i would like but very 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 well uh, and is a lot less expensive than for example uh, Niwaki, i think is the uh, the stones i use wow completely forgotten Shafton, sorry, Shafton Stones uh, sold to me by a company called Niwaki, I think was actually where I got them from in the UK. Now, but yes, sharpening stones are absolutely, absolutely required. Um, thank you, Rob Phoenix. Uh, yeah, it's good to be back. It's also great that the, um, uh, the tool shop has moved. The old tool shop is now empty and keys have been handed back and uh, beyond some admin uh, I, I can actually start thinking about getting on with what I want to be doing which is building things. Uh, we're also now in the process of completely gutting and building my dream studio at Crimson Headquarters so we'll get there. Diverging guitars. <coughs> So hi Ben, I finished the uh, 28 and a half inch scale baritone with a tunematic bridge. I shifted the bridge position plus two millimeters at the low end and one millimeters at the high. Uh, I'm still having trouble with intonation on the lowest string at the 12th fret and up. Okay, should I have put the low bridge post even further out for a barry? So potentially the hmm. my general rule is exactly what you just said. One mil back at the treble side, two mil back at the at the at the base. Now assuming that you have set the tunematic saddles in the center when you do that, you should have an extra four millimeters of travel beyond the nominal scale length on top of the two millimeters that you've already got. So you, you've got six millimeters to play with, and that should be more than enough for even a baritone string, to be honest. Uh, I would play a little bit with the gauge string that you've got, potentially. Uh, I would also have a look at the tunematic. Sometimes you can change the orientation of the of the saddle so that the it might well be that you're going off the front edge of the saddle uh, rather than the back you could move move it so that it's beveled backwards uh, just to give you a little bit more but if you're intonated before the 12th fret and it starts going out well i suppose yeah send me a photo of this stream at crimsonguitars.com and I will have a look at that and uh, and get back to you. Ah, a would you rather from JS Trucking. Would you rather have glazed or powdered <laughs> sugar donuts for a snack? Uh, why not both? Okay, no. Uh, a powdered, uh, powdered sugar, um, because frankly I'm not supposed to eat too much sugar in the first place. Um, so, uh, yeah. There we go. <sighs> Apple turnover, probably. Uh, Darwid Baron has come in with a £10 super chat. Thank you very much. It says, hi, Ben. If you do need some help with video editing, I'm more than happy to help. I'm starting my journey with videography and would love to do some guitar-related work. All the best at Anozum Project. Uh, drop, drop us an email. Uh, Drop us an email through uh, through stream at crimsonguitars.com again, actually, and uh, we will talk because there could be. Well, yeah, I actually haven't seen if anybody's answered that. I, I, I think so. What we're thinking about doing with Great Guitar Build Off is no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, no. There may well be need for a, a cadre of video editors. So, yeah, we should be in touch. <whistles> Kevin Harvey says, 
Don't forget to put masking tape on ply before cutting it to reduce tear out. That is a very, very good tip. Uh, Margaret says, good day, Ben from Maine. I'm a Lee Nielsen's neighbor. Um, can I come and stay? Um, no, I'm a fan of, uh, I'm a fan of their work very much so. Now. All right, Derek Keller coming with a $10 super chat. Thank you very much, Derek. It says, my buddy's base has some back bow between the nut and fret five uh, to where strings rest on the first fret. Slight relief on the rest of the neck per truss adjustment. I'm thinking maybe leveling frets. Thoughts on cause? Fix? You've got some back bow up to the first fret and then standard truss rod adjusted front bow between the fifth fret. It sounds like somebody's used a short truss rod that's adjustable from that side and it's just not touching the, uh, the first five frets, uh, potentially. Um, just leveling the frets won't do it, I don't think. I think that what you're gonna have to do is probably, now only you've got the guitar, the, the bass, sorry, in front of you, uh, so I can't really judge but I suspect that you're going to have to pull the frets out and adjust the fretboard itself and then refret. Uh, check with a notched straight edge over those frets. Uh, see what the fretboard itself is actually doing and how bad it is. Adjust the truss rod so everything is nice and straight and then see what happens. If you can get the neck perfectly straight, and then when you adjust the truss rod, it does what you've just described, then I, I would say you've got a truss rod that's too short. Uh, and it's, there's just nothing going on between those first five uh, frets. There's no adjustment there. Um, it just surprises me that it's back bow rather than forward bow. But uh, yeah. Anyway, here is a text from uh, from Mark Jennings, who says, hello, here's an off-putting message midstream. I love you, Mark. Uh, I had some, uh, some coffee that Mark sent this morning from, uh, from a company called uh, Recent Beans. Freshly roasted is just better. And uh, yeah, I was drinking the Monsoon Malabar this morning. Very, very nice stuff. So uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Now, the, the cause on that, uh, on that issue could also have been the way that it was clamped. Apparently, if you, if you clamp at either end of the fretboard and then move into the middle, you can actually build tension into the neck that comes out in various ways. Or it could just be that you were unlucky in the, the wood used on the, on the neck is just strange and has decided to just twist there. Wood does that. It does its own thing. <coughs> and uh, this is what it is. Oh, Drew Kernan. Uh, I have not seen them, but I've seen that there is a message there. I actually went in to look at that this morning and ended up having to spend half an hour uh, composing a reply to somebody else. And uh, that was 100% the whole half hour that I was going to do any admin on my Sunday. But uh, um, yes, some photographs of uh, a toolbox, if I recall. Uh, so I will have a good look and a bit of a, a lust after. And I will reply to you as soon as. Okay, Anthony Cuncliffe says, uh, might be an obvious question but which is easier to make a one-piece neck or a three-piece three-piece is one inherently better than the other because you always do one piece I kind of assume that that's the best option um, no a three-piece neck is a multi-laminate neck is stronger uh, and I okay there we go I'm just I'm just looking at the uh, uh, the Star Wars guitar I'm building right now, the Boba Fret, uh, that's a, a multi-laminate neck. Uh, so that's three pieces with, uh, with veneer. And, uh, but that being said, recently, yeah, I've been doing one piece necks predominantly. 
it's just one of those things. So yeah, no, I would say that a three piece is better. It is a little bit harder to make, but there's not really that much in it, to be honest. If you can make a guitar neck, then you can make a three piece guitar neck, basically. Uh, Derek Keller, oh, sorry, I've just replied to that one already. Uh, Sun Bass has come in with a $5 super chat, thank you very much, and says, it seems good wood is harder and more expensive to get each year. Do you see a time when other materials will be the norm for electric guitar building? I don't think so. I think that we're, we are in a period of incredible inflation across the board. So uh, yeah, good wood is expensive, uh, but everything else is also, I, I, can't, I can't believe how much we are having to pay for, for good bridges and tuners, for example. Uh, a, a good pickup is mind-numbingly expensive to me. In my head, it's still 40 or 50 quid a pickup like it was when I started. No, that's not the case anymore for, for you know, high-end uh, branded stuff. Um, everything has got more expensive over the last couple of years. And uh, wood is something that has been hit a little bit harder than most things. But uh, now, so there is that. But uh, there is also the fact that I don't think we're going to run out of it as a resource. I think that more and more forests are being sustainably managed and looked after properly. And a natural part of that process of doing it properly is cutting down trees. It is making space for other things to grow. It is at the end of a tree's life cutting it down, carting it out, and growing another batch. So, so no, I think that probably for the next 100 years, 200 years or so, he, he guesstimates, we won't really have an issue. Uh, there will always be some wood that is suitable for guitar building that will be available. Uh, now, the problem is one of the, the expense of good quality guitar wood is that it has to be prepared and treated and looked after and all of that properly before you get it. And that takes time and energy and expense. Um, we've just bought a very expensive, although I got a very good deal on it, um, sander. And one of the main reasons I, I bought this sander thickness was because I want to go wholeheartedly into the, the guitar wood business. Because so many people ask me so many times, where do you get good wood from, Ben? How can I guarantee that I'm getting quality wood that will do what I want it to do? Well, we're going to do that. But, uh, <coughs> but it's going to take a lot of time and a lot of effort to dry it and prepare it and, and all of that. So, uh, so yeah, there's storage and time and time and then some more time and more effort uh, involved. And that is part of the cost. So as everything gets more expensive, wages get more expensive, rent gets more expensive, electricity gets more expensive, the cost of the wood that uses all of these things to, to produce gets more expensive. Uh, Luther Bill says, how much do quilted maple seeds cost? Uh, I don't know, but if you can give me some quilted maple seeds uh, and guarantee they come up quilted, I would, uh, yeah, that would be lovely. So uh, speaking of which, Luther Bills, if you know anybody who's uh, got a good supply of quilted maple, give me a shout, I'd be interested. <sighs> at trade prices, of course. Okay. Philip, Philip Wilson says, in a world that makes me very sad, I love guitar and luthiers are some of my favorite people. Well, I think that you need to come and join us and become one of us and then, uh, okay, I said that flippantly. If I didn't have my workshop, if I didn't have, uh, if I didn't have taking a sharp chisel and cutting a piece of wood and making that sound and that shaving and that final result, if I didn't have this in my life, I don't think I would be here now in all seriousness. Um, I gain so much happiness and so much 
um, purpose from this uh, and from this safe space that uh, I, I cannot I cannot imagine getting this anywhere else so yeah if you're having a hard time in the rest of your life start making it really 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 helps it really does alrighty uh, Yuria Shemesh says, what's the most unique and special for you piece of wood that you've ever used? It was the quilted sapiti that I used in the nine hour build and then subsequently from the same tree uh, in my, in the complication, the 90 hour build. That was just mind blowingly beautiful and it was a privilege to work with. And uh, yeah, I wish I'd kept that nine hour to myself. Zach Ellison's come in with hot peach cobbler and ice cold milk. Hi Ben. It's so good to see you and to be here last Friday uh, in the hospital with 245 over 190 BP. Holy, f that does not sound good. Uh, but finally uh, signed out on Sunday. Scary, could you answer Lisa's question above? Uh, Lisa, I didn't see one from her. Uh, although I've started working on the website, Lisa. I'll go back up. Uh, 245 over 190. Dude, that is that is an insane blood pressure. You, you need to... Uh, uh, you need to relax, yo. I'm glad that you're out. Now I need to find Lisa's question. Nope. Nope, this is taking too long. All right, if somebody else could please find Lisa's question and uh, copy it in and I'll see. Uh, Leon says, hi Bun, I ordered something from Crimson late December, arrived in Holland the first week of January, um, which is actually late December, the first week of January, that's incredible considering we were closed for much of that time. Um, since then it's being held at the Postal Service's custom point, I contacted the Postal Service but they suggest contacting the seller, I did an email a few weeks ago but haven't heard back yet. Okay, Leon, I will uh, write that down. Uh, we are having... I've actually hired a whole new person to come in and support on the email side of things. Could you please send another email uh, to us to shop at crimsonguitars.com? Uh, say FAO Ben RE live stream question. <laughs> and I will get them to search it up tomorrow. We are inundated at the moment. Uh, there are some issues with uh, international shipping that are just causing there are some parts of the world where we can't even use our normal shipping uh, things we have to we have to use couriers because it is literally there are entire countries where we literally can't ship to using the normal postal system and um, it's insane you're not one of them though so there shouldn't be an issue there okay ah lisa all i see from lisa is thanks zach Okay. Uh, JS Trucking says, Kimball Hardwoods has a lot of figured wood for guitars. They have an Instagram page. I also emailed the picture in regards to my plywood question earlier. Okay. <coughs> uh, I will have a look at that later. But uh, yeah, I think just a, um, just a good quality hardpoint handsaw will do the job. And uh, here's Mark Jennings sending me messages again. Uh, not for public release, he starts with. This means I have to say public release. Um, uh, yeah, it's followed by an off-putting message. Nope, that's not for public release. I stream, dum dum dum. Okay. Uh, Kibble hardwoods, I've heard of them. I've not used them before, but uh, yes. <laughs> Lisa says, even I'm looking for the question, lol. Okay, well, oh, here we go. Uh, Dave Nyberg says, Lisa's question, tips for a, a meter for those who can't afford the Wagner. Um, the Wagner Orion moisture meter is without a shadow of a doubt uh, the, the best thing that you can have um, for, for ease of use and accuracy and all that. But you already know that. Um, now, the... the 
there are issues using traditional pin-based moisture meters and that is that they are very very situational they're very specific i.e you're sticking a pin in the end grain or in a central section of the guitar wherever you're using it and you're only actually reading that particular area now you can buy one of those for for a tenor and you can be guaranteed that it won't be that accurate okay essentially it's running a current between the two diodes i don't know what would you even call those the, the the spikes it's running a current between the two spikes and it's using that current to work out how much water is in the wood exactly there okay so unless you cut the wood in half and then stick it right into the center which is possible if you're book matching a top for example you're, nev you're never going to be absolutely sure that it is that reading all the way through however if you have had a piece of wood and you've bought it from a good supplier and you test in various places on that wood where it's going to be cut away as you build and if you do that and it's giving you a reading that is pretty close to what you would want it to be then you should be okay i would suggest if you've got a cheap moisture meter use it learn it watch the wood as it develops uh, definitely don't use wood straight away i would even if you buy it from kimball hardwoods or somebody else like that um, take it as soon as it arrives test it with the moisture meter in various places write down next to those places on the wood what it was and the date and maybe even time where you took it store that wood in a nice dry place and then in a week's time come back and measure it again okay and you will see that it's going to dry over, over over time and at some point it's going to reach its equilibrium moisture content and because you're taking notes you're fine now the orion meter here it syncs up to my phone and uh, tells me all sorts of things but it saves it saves what I, the, the data i want on my phone so i can just look back and say oh this this piece of wood you know it's gone from you know 16 percent down to to nine and a half and it stayed at nine and a half um, using a piece of pencil on the wood itself it works just as well not quite as convenient but it's fine so so yeah uh that being said i would not go for the cheapest budgetiest uh moisture meter available uh there are still i got given a free one with my uh, um wood burning stove when it was installed in the house uh, a few years ago and i wouldn't trust that i wouldn't trust that period but um you know 30 pounds or so 30 40 dollars something like that is still budget in comparison to this but it's probably going to be a little bit more reliable so so there we go good question and uh, yes uh, lisa i've had uh the the data on the website i know you've been talking about that quite a lot or you've been asking us about that uh, there is a lot going on on there now so uh, i've done some work on pulling the vintage tool shops stock etc over and uh, we are now looking at everything else uh, the whole the whole layout and stuff i've changed some some coloring but uh, there's there's a lot happening and uh, that should be happening imminently now Tommy Bland says, who would you suggest for pre-thickness timber in the UK? Crimson guitars, of course. Uh, if we have it, we'll, we'll sort you out. Uh, David Dyke, i.e. Uh, Dyke's Luthier Supplies, he... I don't know if he actually gives... if he will pre-thickness it for you, but he might. Other than that, to be honest, most of the people we go to, I'm buying whole trees at this point, so... Uh, I'm I'm pretty much out of that game, really. Uh, there aren't that many. <sighs> um, Bill says I lost my dear wife last April. I'm very very sorry, uh, Bill. And says I totally agree with you, Ben, that getting into making creates a new purpose in life. That's why I joined the community shed in Bridport to have even more purpose. You're very not, you are very not far from me. Bridport is only basically one town over. Uh, I would love to have you come and visit the workshop at some point. Um, drop us an email or phone and uh, 
uh, and schedule a thing and I will personally give you a, a, a walk around the, uh, the workshop. Uh, maybe give it about three weeks and uh, it'll be a lot tidier at that point. Uh, but yeah, I would uh, love to see that. Um, similarly, uh, there's another one saying I had a, a, a total breakdown uh, in 2019 and it was only getting back into the building that um, uh, getting back into Luthery into building guitars that uh, got me out of my slump. So uh, yeah, there's a lot of people uh, talking about how great uh, just making stuff is for mental health issues. Ah, Carl Price says, what really helps on tear out, use a scalpel blade to score the line before making the cut. It will slice the wood fibers that wood want to pull. That is another very good thing and I feel embarrassed that I didn't say that. Uh, Inky Guitar says, Ben, when will we be able to buy wood from Crimson? Uh, it's going to start going live on the website within the next month or six weeks. Uh, the, the Vintage Toolshop team are uh, now training other staff within Crimson in how to ramp up the because the tool shop team are used to putting 50 to 80 new tools uh, live on the website every single day uh, not that they've been doing that recently and uh, they will be teaching us uh, and training people how to do that with wood as well so we'll it'll take a while but uh, at some point soon we're going to start uh, really ramping all of this up okay <clears throat> Mike and Noel says I got some Bubinga I was very excited about but it was way too hard so now I'm focusing on base wood with maple tops Bubinga is one of those things uh, Ian M says regarding moisture meters you can DIY a pin type with a multimeter it's a big faff but it can be done um, I mean, that, that sounds like a video I have to do. DIY multimeter based moisture meter. Wow. That I did not know. Sounds like magic to me. Uh, Rob Phoenix says David Dykes will pre thickness for a small fee. I thought that would be the case. Uh, no go, but I do not have uh, any hickory. <laughs> Lisa says, phew, and you've altered other things too. I check every day. <laughs> it's, uh, there's, there, there, yeah, thank you. And sorry. Uh, Mark says, love to you and all your audience. You're a good man, dude. Uh, All right. All right, people, the, the questions are slowing down. So, uh, um, and yeah, we've been going for coming up an hour and a half. So if there's any more queries, hit me or we'll uh, uh, put a pin in this after all this talk of uh, pin-based moisture meters. Uh, how many coats of Crimson's Melamine lacquer do you think would be needed to achieve a thick finish like you can get with Nitro? Um, so uh, Melamine tends to eat itself so the first important thing is not to drip on anywhere else and if you do drip get it off rapidly um, it is not the same finish but you're talking three or four coats really uh, because even with nitro you don't want a thick you don't want a thick finish you want it as thin as possible while keeping it flat so yeah uh, three or four coats maybe six at most i wouldn't want to do any more than that uh, with rubbing down, etc., in between. Um, I have no idea how to pronounce your name. Uh, Stigen van Morgan says, I really want to build a guitar, but I have to start from scratch with no equipment. Is it better to 
to buy a DIY kit. Uh, for a very first build, uh, now it depends on how much experience you've got with tools, whether you own tools or not, doesn't make any difference. If you've had experience using woodworking tools and paints and chisels and stuff or not. If you've got zero experience, I would suggest yes, buy a kit. Preferably a good quality one, but uh, i.e. we do them at Crimson. But, um, but if you have some experience and have never built a guitar, then consider a kit neck where the really precise bits, i.e. Uh, the fret slots and the truss rod and all that, those have been done for you. We do a, an uncut kit where you can actually carve the neck yourself. Um, and in fact, we'll do an uncut kit with a, with a, a rectangular body where there are various options you can choose. But for example, the neck pocket will be done and the neck will be, the frets will be uh, slotted and all that jazz. With those things done, then you can you can go at it with a jigsaw and a, and a carving gouge and get a guitar that you know at least has those things done and will work perfectly. If you have more experience with tools, I just buy tools and, and, and go for it. Um, but uh, yeah, as a first build, at the very least, a, a slotted fretboard is the way to go, in my opinion. One of the biggest mistakes I made was believing that I could do anything and was amazing. And uh, frets were not my friend. Not at all. It took a long time. Uh, yeah, it did. <sighs> JS Trucking and Guitars uh, comes in with enhanced Terra Kelvin pinless moisture meter for wood. Pinless moisture meter for woodworking, non-invasive lumber is listed at 50 US dollars. Wow, okay. So that's a, a similar sort of system to the uh, um, the Wagner meter, but um, at a budget. Uh, if somebody, well, let me know how that goes. <laughs> Sidar Carvin wants pickup making videos. When I learn, I will. Well, I, what I was planning on doing was actually filming a, a series with Sam, who is our pickup guru, teaching me how to make them on a video, and th thus he'll be teaching me and you guys at the same time. So that's that is something to uh, to think about. Uh, Rob Phoenix is coming with five pounds. It says best option for a non-glossy matte finish over water-based stains. Stunning ones, of course. Uh, it's the it's a guitar finishing oil. It is the guitar finishing oil. Uh, yeah, period. The you said water based. Yes, basically let the water based stains cure for a day or so. Uh, if you've got the luxury of time, I often don't, and then uh, pour on some thick, not not the not the penetrating, just the the standard uh, high build guitar finishing oil. Uh, and uh, flood it on there and then rub the excess off after a while and you should be okay. Two or three coats of that and you'll be done. Uh, follow if you fancy with some Renaissance wax to seal everything off. But uh, yeah, that, that is what I would do. That is, well, it is what I do most of the time. Uh, the very best is to send it to Crimson and we will uh, coat it in the uh, the flash coat that we use for all the students, etc. Because that is much, much harder wearing than a guitar finishing oil. But uh, yeah, if you want to do it uh, without the luxury of a, a full spray booth, etc. Then uh, guitar finishing oil, high build. And thank you for the super chat. Sweetie Guitars is coming with another super chat. Thank you very much. And says break angle on on neck, body or both. Uh, and suggested method for dealing with the angle difference from the fretboard to the top of the body. Okay, so I do, I tend to do the break angle inside of... So. Basically, leave the, the neck pocket square, okay? Uh, measure how deep you want your the pocket to be so that the binding or the side of the fretboard is level with the top. You take a standard wooden pencil, not one of these graph gear ones, you put this at the bridge position, 
literally on the bridge line. And uh, you then rest your template from that down to the front edge of the guitar. That there is around about two and a half degrees and that there is around about exactly what you need for almost every single neck break angle you can dream of. And it is as simple as that. You then route down. <laughs> okay. You then route down and, and that will give you an angled cavity. You then either need to carve the top down so that it's at the same angle or even easier, you do all of that, you forget the template, you run the the base of the plane on the pencil, the front of the plane is on the front edge of the guitar, and that, plane, 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 that will create the same angle that you require. Then all you need to do is take the pencil away and put your template down on the on the now correctly angled top and you'll have what you require. There are times when I talk and I'm not sure if I'm making sense. <clears throat> I hope I am. Break angle, pencil, trick. Trick, not tick. Come on, Ben. I can't even read my own writing sometimes. Hugh McKay, what are the rules on choosing tone wood for acoustics? Uh, pretty much the the top. There are only two choices: it's Western Red Cedar or good quality Sitka Spruce. And uh, the cedar tends to sound warmer, but more immediately toneful whereas Sitka Spruce will take a number of years to develop into uh, its character generally. Uh, good tight grain on the top and you'll be sorted. For the back and sides, it tends to be that you want the most reflective wood possible, i.e. very hard, very strong, and uh, so you, rosewoods and ebonies and things like that will, will be perfect. Um, and R slash Will Crimson Cell classical guitar templates. Yes, I would love to. Uh, if you have any in particular that you want, drop us an email and we will make them. Acoustic instruments is something that we've sort of uh, shied away from. There's just so many things that we want to do and, uh, and that's something that uh, we really do need to. Luther of a Build says, Ben, does a hip shot hardtail even require a break angle? Uh, by the way, you look cool in that hat. Well, in that case. <laughs> I crave coolness. Um, <laughs> Crimson merch, and thank you. Um, now I'm embarrassed. Um, no, not really. A hip shot hardtail, a standard hardtail, doesn't really require a break angle. Um, they're nine, nine millimeters or so high. So the seven mil, eight mil of your fretboard, etc., should do it. You, 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 you should be okay. Uh, the problem with hats is that uh, I've grown used to being bald, and I don't, unless it's particularly cold out, I overheat very rapidly. So there we go. Now you know that. Jules says, "Have you ever thrown down a jar of shellac?" I just <sighs> cleaning is real. <laughs> um, and now you've got to clean up the uh, the mess created by the shellac. I am so sorry. Oh. Matt F says, Hey, Bun, did you see that the son of Andrew Bond seems to be trying to start up making electric light instruments again? I did not. Son of Bond. Starting Electroglide again. I am going to look into that. Uh, I would love to build them for him. Mm -hmm. Do 
Crumpet says, what about making YouTube shorts about little tricks like that break angle trick and the infamous masking tape and super glue trick uh, where an entire video wouldn't be needed for one trick? I, Whenever we've tried to do YouTube shorts, uh, people have complained in like properly, oh, if it's not a whole video, I really hate you. Like, Dude, seriously? Um, but uh, no, most of these things could, even if it's a three or a five minute video, I think just a video is, is there because... It, I don't know, I'm not a fan of shorts myself. I'm trying to avoid the bad jokes. You, you can see the, the, the struggle I have. JS uh, says, are these fan frets or multi-scale frets? Uh, I've seen a few guitars with zigzag fret wire. So the zigzag fret wire is the... Uh, um, I've now got a mental block. Please let us know in the comments what they are. They're not multi-scale. They are... So I, somebody asked the same question a couple of weeks ago and I utterly blanked on the name and now my brain is blanking on the name. It sucks. I know that, you know it, everybody knows it, but I can't bring the word to mind. I've even used them. Zach Ellison, wild boar roast on the beach with friends and family. How much time do you spend on creating new guitar designs? Uh, there are a lot out there, but so many bad, are, so many are bad and have been produced. Thanks, God bless you and yours. Uh, so, not I don't spend very much time doing that. Although, in reality, I would love to do more. So, part of the combining of my two businesses or well, those two businesses at least, has been to create more time for me so that I can concentrate on the stuff that really matters, i.e. making the videos and designing the guitars and building building the, the, the combined business. So, uh, yeah, I was looking at working on the website and uh, uh, putting photos. We're going to be putting up uh, new galleries of guitars that we've built. And there isn't one that I'm other than the builds that I've personally done in here, there isn't, and even those have issues that issues there's not we don't build the guitars that i want to build yet so there's a lot of work to be done <sighs> luther the build says your short with the dried lumber was really funny uh do more really funny bun um yeah i dropped that lathe as well that was that was amusing as well uh, Sweet Tea Guitar says, thank you for the, taking the time to do this every week. I've learned everything I know from you and I feel the need to thank you for changing my life. Dude, it's an absolute pleasure. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I love what I do. I love getting to do this. And the fact that you guys, well, there's 154 of you here uh, listening to me prattle on. And uh, yeah, I appreciate your support as, as, as much as you, Sweet Tea, appreciate what I've taught you. Um, without you, I'd be crying in a corner somewhere with an office job, if that. <coughs> Morganian Evolution says, at Jules, at least your floor will be shiny. This is a very good point. We will try some more YouTube shorts. Uh, Bear, uh, the new editor, is uh, um, doing some Interesting things. Okay. True temperament. Microtonal. True temperament is the one. That's it. I can't believe. I've just completely... Yeah. True temperament frets. Those are the frets that go all over the place. Um, uh, not microtonal. But uh, they're interesting. I, I just... I'm not a fan. They're only correct in one key as well. There's, there's many issues with it. Okay. The Borgonian Evolution says the problem with shorts is the bajillion alerts you get when everyone is doing them. Then you have to suffer two ads to watch a 30 second clip. I would much rather... <coughs> <coughs> Coughing your ears, I'm so sorry. <coughs> I would much rather do a three minute video or a five minute video properly explain what I'm trying to teach and then have it available and uh, accessible long term and just there. Uh, 
Tommy Blunt says, have the mini buns made anything with you? Uh, I had to reread that, re that three times. Um, uh, yes, Jasmine's not a huge fan of the workshop anymore. She uh, She's a bit scared by various machines and things, which I, I do understand. Uh, awesome loves working on the lathe. Uh, I don't... I actually don't spend anywhere near as much time making things with them as I should. I, I do that with you guys, and that's... And then I'm knackered, which is a problem. Uh, I would like to spend more time making. So, uh, yeah. That is my New Year's thing. Hmm. Not that I believe in New Year's resolutions. Okay, look at that. I am absolutely knackered, guys. I'm falling off the edge. Um, hi, Bun. Get your students to do the video shorts. I do think that it could be interesting to have uh, the have videos filmed in the students room on the Crimson Guitars Extras channel potentially. Uh, that could be fun, but um, yeah, we'll see. Not the main channel. Uh, Rob Phoenix says, uh, think your next crowd inspired build should have a poll for true temperament multi-scale, sits back and grabs a popcorn. Um, three little things, put in time out, put the user in, no. Um, <laughs> I hope that you guys know me enough not to do that to me. Although, okay, that being said, the True Temperament people have apparently fixed the biggest issue I had, which was that the material they were casting them out of when I used them at Crimson a good few years ago now uh, was just too soft. Apparently it's now hard enough. But uh, there are still fundamental issues with how it sounds that I don't think are required in music. I think it's too precise and too clinical. I think it is far too much of an issue that you have to have particular um, frets for the um, the key, etc. But on top of that, any frets wear down, and that would be an absolute nightmare to level, crown, and polish. And they are not going to come leveled, crowned, and polished. You have to do that when you install them, and then you have to do it again as they wear down. Nobody wants to do that. Ooh. Anyway, thank you, Zach. Uh, Sirdar Carvin says, Ben, I'm wondering that you said cutting frets were not, was not your friend, so what happened at the end? Um, my first five or ten guitars were not great, and there were issues with fret slots going off piste and having to be redone and redone and redone. Uh, and then leveling, crowning and polishing and all that. I didn't know how to do that properly for the first 20, 30, 40 guitars. Uh, I, when I started, I had a book that described something and they were using, well, you called them stoning the frets. You'd use a freaking oil stone <laughs> to level the frets, which is stupid. It doesn't work. Um, I didn't have YouTube. I didn't have quality photographs and, and good, etc. It, it's just... It's just one of those things. I mean, nowadays, a complete novice can watch a couple of dozen of my videos or a build series or two uh, and then know generally what they need to do. And then when they come, when they're about to do a particular task, type into YouTube, how do I carve a neck? And then you'll have half a dozen or more videos come up and you can, ah, that's how to do it. And I didn't have any of that. So uh, it didn't go well. Ian M says he can't imagine bending on a true temperament guitar. Yeah, me neither. <sighs> okay. Tommy Bland, haggis, neeps, and tatties. You say that one a lot, don't you? Uh, what is the worst design element you've seen in a guitar and why is it German carves? Um, I, I personally hate German carves and that's, I, it's, it just, it's not ergonomic in any way, shape or form. Um, the worst design element it is so subjective. The Parker electric guitar. Uh, the way I play and the way many other people play, uh, that the back section that's up against you here, you've got your belly carve that's actually up here, really, if you're playing. Uh, for some reason, that corner of the carve digs right into, into this bit and it's just horrendously un uncomfortable. And that... Uh, I don't like that. Um, I think that... 
a fender style flat headstock i understand that it was done for economies of scale and all of that jazz but uh, angled headstocks are easy and are better Disco Stew, <laughs> fight me on that last comment, uh, says I've got some curly ebony fretboards, they look awesome, I can't find any curly ebony pictures online, it's definitely not black stained maple, is it? Lol? Uh, no, it's definitely curly ebony, uh, it's very difficult to photograph for one, and the second you put any finish on it, i.e. oil, or whatever it happens to be, uh, oftentimes uh, you basically lose you can't see that flaming anymore so no you've definitely got what you think you've got um, it just tends to not uh, last i remember the first time i found properly curly ebony in a build it was on camera uh, i can't remember what the build was but yeah divergent guitars has come in with a ten dollar super chat thank you very very much and said the last two years have been so hard mental health wise starting to build guitars has done wonders for my depression and anxiety uh, thanks for giving me a nudge down this path with your videos and creations it's an absolute pleasure anything we can do to help uh, it's this is this is the reason this is a reason you know I, I would be completely disingenuous if I said I didn't do it because hey it pays the wages and it pays the wages of 20 or so people that work for me but um, the reason why I am down here at nearly 10 o'clock on a Sunday evening, uh, when frankly I should be asleep, um, uh, is because of things like this. So there we go. Uh, that being said, I really should be asleep now. Now. Okay, apparently there's a few more moisture meters to look at. Um, okay, many, 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 many comments. Uh, Dusty Dark Horse, great name, says super glue masking tape trick saved my butt last week. Any other stupidly cheap and easy yet non-intuitive tricks a cabinet maker would never think of. That one... Seriously, that was taught to me by a, um, a former apprentice who sadly got drunk and fell in a canal and fucking drowned to death. Um, incredibly talented, just, just horrific waste. But uh, he had studied at Bournemouth University doing product design, I think, so laser cutters and CNCs and all that jazz, and uh, working with architects to, to to build scale models of the buildings that they were planning on doing and that that sort of stuff and he learned that trick in at the university and that's something that uh, the machinists who use the laser cutters and cnc machines use all the time there and the first time i saw him using it in my workshop i shouted and said don't do that that's never going to be strong enough and he kept on doing it because he knew it was and i finally said oh come on show me then um it proved to me that it's strong enough and there we go so it's not even a cabinet it's not even a luthier's trick it's something that i learned from from somewhere else uh, if there is one thing that you learn from me it is that you need to you need to take inspiration from as many different places as humanly possible don't just watch cabinet makers or woodworkers or guitar builders videos. Um, go and watch a jeweler. Go and watch blacksmiths. I mean, we all do anyway because it's fun, fire and pff, sparks and shit. But those, it's in those places where you'll watch a jeweler doing something and suddenly the way they hold the tool or the way they use a graver and, and you go, oh my gosh, that's how they get that effect I wanted to get on, on my inlay, or I'm not happy with the colour of this metal and doing it this way, or um, why don't I apply the texture that they use on those Odomar PK watches onto my bridge or tuners, etc., like I did on one of my GGBO builds. And it's taking those things um, and applying them sideways to guitar building that keeps this really, really interesting. Uh, in my opinion. So there we go. 
Okay, guys. Um, anyway, uh, Uriah Shemesh says a question. How would you approach making wooden pickup covers uh, without a CNC? Uh, <clears throat> a flat pickup cover is fine. I would do it the same way I would do a uh, any inlay, just a, a piercing saw or an inlay saw, very gently cut it out, drill carefully, and be done. Uh, a 3D pickup cover that goes all the way over and surrounds, you'd have to route it out with a hand router <coughs> while in a large piece of wood and then cut down to the sides and the edges, etc. But uh, yeah, that's, that's what I would do. <coughs> anyway, I do need to, I really do need to stop this because uh, I'm not drinking that vile water and uh, my throat is now getting really, really sore. Jay is trucking guitars. Well, you can also use masking tape and super glue, masking tape and double-sided carpet tape if you don't have super glue. I've used that before, it works the same way. That's a, that's a good point. The, the, the issue I've got with the double-sided carpet tape is that a lot of it comes very, very thick and there's some movement. And even a half millimeter of movement when you're using a template uh, causes an issue. But, um, uh, if you've got good quality masking tape, uh, sorry, double-sided tape that doesn't have that movement in there, yeah, go for it. Um, old Man Zen says, ordered a couple of kits to put together with my eldest son. Uh, lockdown's been rough. I hear you, I hear you. Um, so we're going to get together every couple of weeks to work on them together. I can't wait. Thanks in advance. Thank you. Um, I think that the implication is that you ordered them from us, but, um, thank you very much. And yes, uh, that's, that is the thing. My, my youngest desperately wants to build, but he can't be trusted in the workshop just yet. And, uh, as they get older and more capable, I am so looking forward to doing that sort of stuff. I've got a whole forge set up out here because, uh, my middle child, Awesome, who's just about big enough now to start doing it, desperately wants to make swords and fire and sparks and stuff and uh, I can't wait I can't wait <sighs> okay anyway there we go uh, thank you Robert R thank you Jeff's guitars Borgonian Evolution Rabnox I think there is Rab yeah yes Rabnox says night troops JS trucking uh, MVP as always, Dave Nyberg, Ian M, uh, Uriah Shemesh, just everybody, you guys rule. Thank you very much for your support. Thank you for the questions. Uh, I knew this was going to be a good stream. I missed it and I have a total blast uh, every single time. So uh, tomorrow, tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. UK time, that's 6 a.m. Eastern Standard, I think. Uh, I am going to be cracking on with the Boba Fred guitar. I don't think necessarily it's going to be the final video, but you know, it might. We'll see. Uh, when all is said and done, you guys rule. And uh, thank you very much. Click like, subscribe, see you on the main channel tomorrow for the stream and uh, keep well. Have a good week. Uh,